but it won't. I thought we didn't have any steel for bumpers. I've ordered some steel today. If it weren't for Andrew and his brother, then the sport would be in a sorry state, because there's nobody else would be able to beat, Frank. I've just started to have a little bit of success recently. Yeah, I'm sorry if other drivers can't keep up with me on speed. You know, that's up to them to sort their cars out and get faster. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit narked about all this stuff that's going on. I feel a lot of it's personal. Um, and it's bang it out of order. When it comes to playing fair, Frankie thinks it's Andy who's cutting corners. Andy's got a bit of an edge with the new tarmac car. You know, obviously, there's a debate to whether it's legal or not. At the end of the day, you know, if the car's not right to the rule book, you know, in my opinion, he shouldn't even be racing it. You know, the cars are good as they are. Everybody has accepted them as they are. You know, and my opinion of the rule book is you cannot do what Andrew's done. The two leading drivers in Formula One stock cars are on a collision course. Cargate is set to divide the sport. James and Ed Neachel have booked a practice session to put their 16-year-old sister, Georgia, through her paces. Well, I want to show her the pace kind of thing, don't you? See what she's in for on Saturday. In two days' time, Georgia will be racing this homemade car against 31 hardened drivers. She's going for it well. Yeah, she could just do it hitting a little bit harder. Yeah. I'm really hurt now, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I kind of forgot that it was my little sister. On Saturday when we're here racing for real, it's not going to be anyone else's little sister, is it? It's just another car to pass. That's good. It's fast. In Nuneaton, the verdict of the disciplinary committee is waiting for Chris Cowley to get home from work. See what this says. Following an incident at Northampton on May 16th, 2009, you were called to the disciplinary hearing where you were charged with a Category A offence, namely deliberate fencing. After reviewing the incident, the panel found that the case was proven and issued a penalty. The panel decided that your licence should be withdrawn for 12 months, with 10 of those months suspended. The panel also fine you 100 quid, which must be paid before you can race. Chris has been banned immediately for two months, but any further bad behaviour, and he'll not race for a whole year. It's not very good, is it? Say hello. Because he's going to think that every time he hits so somebody funny. now, going to hold him back in his racing, really, isn't it? No, it, it won't. <laughs> not going to stop me. I know where they're coming from and I know what they're saying, but it don't seem very bloody fair no, I'll when, tell you, you, when tell you consider that you weren't actually the instigator, were you? No. It is strongly recommended that you cease your ongoing tit-for-tat with Tony Smith. But, I mean, it's a contact sport. He put me in ambulance, so I put him back in an ambulance. It's not tit-for-tat. He did me, so I did him back. Raceway is one of the UK's premier tarmac stock car circuits. Teams have gathered for an evening of Formula One racing on the warmest day of the year. Andy Smith's new car seems to be in hot form. It's the talk of the pits, but not necessarily for the right reasons. Team Wayman have the most to lose if their arch rival proves too fast to catch. I haven't actually looked at Andy's car to say anything about it, but apparently, according to my brother, it's illegal, and according to a few drivers, it's illegal, and according to some other drivers, it's legal. You know, you're not really supposed to do it, but I don't think he, you know, he thinks he can now, or whether they've all the rules, I just don't know. I mean, I don't sort of get involved with it. 
younger brother, Stuart, has also picked up on the pit side rumours. I've heard a few things said that Frankie's been saying it. So whoever's been moaning, you know, I think it's a bit sour grapes, really, because we were going well, and I think they're a bit jealous. Andy's had to have the sports lawmakers in to look at the car. The people who, who make the calls are welcome to, to my garage and just let them check the car, because they've got nothing to hide at the end of the day. I don't give a monkeys about what people might want to say about it, to be honest. As long as the people that matter know that it's right, then you know, obviously it is. I've been building stock cars for 20 years. I'm hardly likely to build an illegal car. You know, I mean, credit me in some sense. Andy may think the matter's closed, but 40 years of smith wayman rivalry could still dictate otherwise. In Frankie's lorry, the ladies are carrying out pre-race checks. I'm looking at eyelashes. Oh, wow. They look nice. They're not implants. They're eyelash extensions. Have you got mascara on? No. They're, um... Jane Mitchell's worried about how daughter Georgia... Oh! ...is going to fare mixing it with the big boys. Dang! She's just really, really nervous. And she hasn't She'll raced anything for ages. She'll be fine. Just really, really scared. Georgia will be up against former world champion Stuart Smith Jr. How's she getting on? She's struggling with a clutch and still. Oh, they're not the easiest of things to drive at the best of times, are they? You enjoyed it, Georgia? No, I never wrecked a nail, though. Did you? Georgia's splashed out on a new outfit for the occasion. Nice overall, isn't that? You know, everyone has to start somewhere, but to see somebody get out of a stock car looking like Georgia does, it's, it's like Charlie's Angels being at stock cars, I suppose. <laughs> Hello. Georgia's dad, Malcolm, has over 30 years of stock car experience. You see that? Control, control yourself while yeah. you wait for a best of luck. Okay. Looking forward to it. A bit scared, but excited at the same time. Yeah, I'm not surprised. No, you'll be all right. Once again, welcome, and here we go with the Formula One cars. A lot of them here tonight, incredibly good turnout, in fact. Let's have a look and see who we've got out there, car number 320, Georgia Nietzsche. Uh, well, that'd be interesting to see how she gets on. Let's get around the first bend. Yeah, Mr. Starter keeps an eye around the track, tops the green flag, and away they go. Circulate the Birmingham Oval at a tremendous rate. before she's rescued. Well, I was like quite nervous really. I just accelerated a bit too much coming out of the bend and spin it round. Forced to sit on the sidelines, Chris Cowley has lent his dad his own car. I think so much of my dad is unbelievable and, I, and I, I've got so much appreciation for what he's done for me. Hence why I've, now I've been banned, I've given him my car to race and I said, look, I want him to do well. Andy Smith is impressed that Rob's got his hands on son's car. Here's my car, Dad. Uh, Tell me. Nice room, isn't it? Yeah. You might as well, aren't you? It's good, isn't it? The car's mint, isn't it? It's sat there, you know. Had the carburetor to bits. It did never tick over quite right. I hear Tony Smith had his carburetor to bits and all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just thought you fed me that one. I thought I'd have an opportunity to get that thing. <laughs> to be out there, but you know, I can't be out there no matter how much I want to be out there, so my main interest now is just making sure he's all right. I'll get the car right for him. I know it'll mean a lot to him and it'll mean a lot to me and I'll be dead happy for him. 